only a couple of weeks ago, we spent some time together in a video working out how we can plow through the back and in action pack in a decent amount of time and still maintain a somewhat happy medium against the quality level we end up with. And all of that is great. Getting armies on the table is really important. But every now and then, I think you, like myself, probably just want to show off a little. Well, a model like the new event-exclusive Kusanagi is perfect for this, and it just so happens that Corvus Belli very kindly sent me one. So, thanks, Corvus Belli. So, welcome, friends, to another Bakunin video, but this time, we're going to be forgetting about the clock and just concentrating on some really cool, flashy techniques so you can show off a bit with your Bakunin. Whilst this won't be for the faint of heart, and... I'm not going to pretend that the techniques that we're using aren't advanced. I feel like I can probably deliver them in such a way as they at least feel approachable and you'll want to have a go. So if you're not an advanced painter, don't think that this video isn't for you and click off. Right then, let's dive in and let's paint Kusanagi. In the previous video, we tackled the black just by airbrushing some grey onto it, and that definitely works. But it does also take a little bit of control away from the sharper end of the highlights, and that can be a problem. In this more high effort version, I'm going to go with wet blending instead. And this starts out by just placing in a solid block of my first highlight stage that clearly defines the shape that I want the blend to be. Once I know that, I can reapply wet paint to what will be the blended edge, and then come in with pure black and feather in that transition. It's really, really important when you do this to let each attempt at the blend fully dry before assessing how it's looking. It might be that you need another pass, it might be that you can soften the transition a little with a glaze, or you might just have hit it perfect first time. From there, you can repeat this process using a brighter grey and a smaller area within your highlight shape. This entire blend is just two stages, so I don't think you necessarily need to go crazy here, gradiating a million different layers. For me, I like to take things bright enough that I can also throw in a pure white or a near white edge highlight here and there. This is another thing that's pretty easy to get carried away with though, so I do recommend just trying to practice a bit of restraint. And the white starts out as largely being a similar affair at first. Coat of Viejo light grey, wet landed up to Viejo wolf grey. The method and approach are exactly the same as I showed on the black, so we don't need to bother with going over that part in too much detail. The difference with the white is that it's the first part where I'll need to start glazing. Now, glazing over white or near white can be super tricky. Both black and white are colours that, for various reasons, aren't always a fan of glazing. I'm using black here, but it's really thin, and I'm building up a bunch of layers of glaze. For me, this is the only way I really know to get the result I like. However, be prepared because you may need to glaze back up into your light grey layer if the transition point is too choppy. The thing is though, being honest, white is just hard. There are a million ways to paint it quickly, and I've shown a load of them on the channel before, but sometimes you just need to lean back on a little texture to help hide your transitions. For me, this isn't really an issue because I love texture. But if you don't like it and you need super smooth, the only solution is going to be to just keep working away until the transition is good. Or is it? Because alternatively, if like me, you have a short tempo when it comes to blends not doing as they're told, and you decide that you don't want texture after all, you could also just totally mask off the problem area and smash in a bit of airbrush. Ironic, I know that airbrushing the black was the best way I could think to speed paint it, yet it's the only way I can think to get the white to go how I want it to. Great. So moving now on to red parts, and this is a bit of an interesting one. The workup I had in the quick and easy video already looked pretty decent. In fact, it was the slowest part of the whole thing in that video, so I could probably be forgiven if I just decided to keep it here. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go back to my old Blood Angels method of glazing the armour down by mixing blue into the base red. Then, if necessary, I'll glaze back up with red to tidy any dodgy transitions. 
These colours behave much, much better than white, and so taking this approach is definitely not a mistake. That said, it's still important to take your time with these glazes, let them fully dry before applying the next coat. Highlighting the reds is nice and straightforward from here though, I have no real reason to reinvent the wheel, again I was happy with the previous attempt on the faster version. An orangey red takes care of my first stage of highlights and a medium sort of skin tone, Anthea skin I think is what it's called from Game Colour, is what I'm using for the second. Where this does diverge from the previous speedy method though is that I also like to mix a little sunny skin tone into that medium skin tone to get some really nice bright highlights. In the box art, Corvus Belly gave Kusanagi this interesting red leather colour for her coat, and I think I want to change this up a little. I enjoy how grungy and scuffed it is, the leatheriness is cool, but I want to go for dark green on my version. After this base coat is down, I'm also going to throw down a quick base coat on all the white piping too. This will make sense in just a second. Because despite it typically being a speed painting technique, I'm actually going to wash the whole coat with Nuln Oil. And whilst this is indeed a technique that pertains to speed, it is also very good at giving a mottled, uneven texture to the surface, which is perfectly in line with the look of leather. And in the place of typical highlighting here, we're really focusing a lot on texture, which again is nice and quick. Stippling little dots and dashes of colour provides a really nice worn look. Increasing the brightness of those colours toward where you'd want the highlighting to be brighter gives a nice two-for-one effect of also providing some lighting to the piece. Painting the face is a fairly nice chill affair, even if it is kind of hard to do on camera. Starting from a mix of game colour and Thayer skin, that's what it's called, and cavalry brown. Into this mix, I just slowly add a dot at a time of sunny skin tone to build up stages of highlight. In terms of the brushwork, I focus on the cheeks, around the nose, on the bridge of the nose itself, as well as the chin. When it comes to the eyes, lips and all that, it's pretty straightforward stuff. And I'm not going to cover it here, if for no other reason than painting lips and eyes on camera is one of the most traumatic things a mini painter YouTuber can go through. Ask any of us. The sword is a fun little affair. I decided to start painting the blade out white and then lathering it in orc skin Vallejo Express colour. This gives me a good base from which to work on something green and glowy. From this setup, it's super easy to just come in with a little white that's been tinted with the same Express colour and get all my nice glowy stuff done eventually working up to maybe some pure white. The hair is a similar approach to the sword as well, except the main colour I'm using here is Turquoise Express colour from Viejo. The highly contrasting starting point is perfect for working on top of to get some exciting and vibrant hair. I'm going to save the exact details on the hair until the big reveal though. I think you're going to dig it, but I don't want to spoiler it in the method. And then the rest is honestly just not different enough from the speedy method for it to be worth me showing you all of the processes. However, what definitely is worth seeing is the finished result. But before we get to that, I just want to ask you to maybe give this video a like if you've enjoyed it so far. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more videos like it. Okay, it's time to go to church. Let's have a look how Kusanagi's looking in all her finished glory. And I guess the question I have to ask is, was it all worth it? So to be honest, for me, I don't think there's a gulf of difference between the speed painted batch that took me 30 hours-ish and this individual model that took me 14 hours. But that isn't really the point. Whilst the gains are fairly small, a bit more crispness, some slightly more refined blends, maybe a little bit more thought on the colour scheme. The real reason that this was so valuable to me, and hopefully to you as well, 
is that it gave me an opportunity to just really try hard and put some effort in to one of my favourite Infinity miniatures. So the question is, should you give it a go? Well, I'd love to know what you think in the comments, but the answer for me is yes, of course. I definitely think you should give it a go. The effort alone is kind of its own reward. You feel a real sense of accomplishment when you complete a miniature that you've tried really hard on. Yeah, hard on. Now then, before we wrap up, just a little aside for a moment, and I wanted to ask, if you are a regular watching my channel, if you feel like you get something from the content, to maybe consider heading over to Ko-fi or Patreon and signing up to one of my membership programs there. Membership starts from just a pound in the UK or about a buck fifty in the States per month. And for that, you get early access to videos, you get membership to my exclusive members only Discord, and some other cool benefits too, depending on how much you actually pledge. It would of course mean the world to me personally, but really, the main reason for it is that it also helps me to be able to actually keep doing these videos. By way of example, my most viewed video ever has made £373 total over a period of two years. That means I earn about £3.50 a week from it. That gives you a little context just so you can see how huge the help is that that Kofi and Patreon money brings in. Links are down in the description below this very video if you want to sign up to either. There's one that says buy me a coffee and has the link to Kofi, and then there's one that says join my Patreon and there's a link to Patreon. And if you do, if you decide you want to go for it, not only obviously will I really appreciate it, but I will see you in the Discord as well, hopefully, and we can talk shop and have some fun. Anyway, that's enough of a look behind the curtain. I hate to bore people with those things every week, but it's just a necessary part of the job. So I apologize, but I'm also not sorry. It is about time for me to get out of your hair though. So until the next one, folks, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.